This boat is 41 years old. Only recently did battery acid do an incredible amount of damage underneath the bunk in the aft cabin. This is putting it all back together far better than when this boat was new. But there is a terrible time crunch. Rebecca is in the U.S. and due back to Africa in a week and a half. Two people cannot live in this boat because of the total disarray of the major construction that's going on. I have to get it completed before she returns. Hello, we are Patrick and Rebecca Childress on the sailboat Brick House, a Valiant 40. We are hauled out in Richards Bay, South Africa, going through everything on this boat, preparing it to cross the Atlantic to Uruguay and point south. Okay, the worst is over with. Now just putting it all back together. This is under the bunk in the aft cabin. Okay, so I've got things cleaned up in this area. Now I need to cut out some of this foam, just a section, maybe about an inch, to allow proper drainage from this whole aft area down into the bilge. And then I need to clean up the top of this foam so I can glue a block of wood to help support this flooring and the new flooring that's going to go on it. I've tried different cleaners and that's not going to uh, do well enough to get the this coloration off. So I'll try the Surform file. And that looks like that's going to clean it up. So I'll work on that and then get ready to make the block to glue in there. So easy when you have the right tools. Okay, this piece came out of here. It was just barely held in. I don't know, it was just with one nail at the top. Kind of strange, it wasn't glued or anything. So, and it's a little wet, it's a little damaged. So I'm gonna make a new one, that'll go in. This other one that's up here, rather flimsy. I'll take that out, clean up the edges that's going to get glued and screwed in place along with the one that i make and at the same time i'll make the spacer to go in here so down here on these cutouts in the framings for all these hoses and everything to run i just pulled hoses and wires out of here i don't like it it's just a sharp edge i could grind that down but um i'd rather just put something over it so i just cut this plastic tubing cheap plastic tubing long ways and then made slits perpendicular so that maybe I can fit it over that saddle and then take the heat gun and melt it in make it fit we'll see how well this works another experiment here on brick house I mean it's been this way for since 1976 nothing has ever apparently uh, chafed through no hoses or wires but I just don't like the way it looks so We'll give it a try. Much better. Some boat owners in this yard, including myself, don't see this as a dumpster, but a trading bin where junk goes in, but treasures come out. Hmm, look at this. Today my lucky day. That looks about 20 mils, three quarters of an inch thick. Foam sandwich, very dense foam. Fiberglass on both sides. This could be a new floor. Okay, this is the old floor. It's three quarters of an inch, 20 millimeters thick. No, that's the wall. This is another little piece of subflooring. You know, 
Holy smokes. It's a little short here, but I think I can live with that and just make it up with fiberglass because it'll all get fiberglassed over anyway. Yeah, this can be sanded down, make it look good. Clean up all this putty somebody's been mixing on here. And that'll be a nice subfloor. In preparation for installing the first piece of flooring, I first had to clean up the whole area with detergent and acetone, get all the greasy oil stuff off of here, and then sand the area with 36 grit paper. So I've got my thickened epoxy, thickened with Cavosil. We've got our flooring right here. It's all been fitted, ready to go. Now to lather in all of that thickened epoxy and set the floorboard in place. Oh, jeez. Oh. The camera didn't turn on, or I didn't turn it on, but I had all of this, all of this thickened epoxy. Ah. <laughs> and I had the uh, floor panel off, out of the way. I took the thickened epoxy and just laid down a big bead around this upper edge where I knew it was going to meet, and along the frame, on the tops of the frames, and along the edges where it's going to meet the rest of the flooring and then I very carefully set it all back in place and dropped it and then screwed it down oh darn I can't believe we missed it on the film but anyway what I'm gonna do now is go back and mix up some more thickened epoxy and just build this up along the edges here fill in the gaps and then we'll get ready for laying some cloth this is the sample of the cord fiberglass panel that came out of the trading bin, got recycled, and is now in the floor on this boat. So it's very strong, very dense cell foam in the middle, and fiberglass, very thick fiberglass on each side. Although some of the other panels that I used uh, were plywood in the middle, and maybe just fiberglass on one side, but if it was plywood, it was marine grade, what you could call marine grade plywood. Uh, very nice thin plies, many of them of wood, and no knots, and of course exterior glue, so there was no delamination of the plywood. A lot of good stuff that comes out of that trading bin. We'll give you a close-up of this. These cord panels are made right here in the haul-out facility on a thick table of glass and a vacuum bagging process. They can be made with any kind of a core to any thickness that the customer wants and with any kind of a finish on either side, including a teak veneer that the customer can varnish and maintain all that he wants. So the next day after all the glue was dry, I washed it with a little soapy water with the dishwashing detergent and then gave it a very good rinsing with fresh water to remove the amine blush. Amine is in the hardener and that creates a oily or waxy feeling surface on cured epoxy and actually acts as a release agent so that has to be washed away before anything else is done including sanding so after washing everything i gave it a great sanding and then it was ready for the layers of fiberglass I think this is going to come out nice and smooth anyway, but I'm going to put the peeled ply on it. And the peeled ply will make it so it'll be nice and smooth in case I do want to um, put in any more layers over this. So when you peel this off, the mean blush comes with it. There's a fine texture equal to the weave of the fabric that's left behind, an imprint in the fiberglass. So it's a nice tooth for the next layer of cloth and resin to adhere to. After a bit of a disaster with some generic epoxy resin, which I showed in the last video, I asked all the yard contractors here what they use and where do they get it from. And they get all of their materials from a company called AMT, which has a home office and distribution center in Cape Town, as well as distribution centers in Durban and Johannesburg. So now I get all of my epoxy resin and supplies from them delivered directly to the boat. They supply GURIT, G-U-R-I-T, resin. And I'm using GURIT SP-106, which they assured me is the equal to West System 105. 
and we have a roll of peel ply and assorted different types of cloth. I'll be using a lot of biaxial cloth on this job. And this is 25 kilos of the SP106 resin that I'll be using. This newly installed subfloor is not wide enough for the batteries to sit side by side because of the curvature of the hull. One row of batteries would be severely tilted. So we have to install spacers to raise the next floor up high enough so the, the batteries can be accommodated. I just got so lucky today at the dumpster, at the trading bin, and these, these strips of marine plywood were just the right thickness, three quarters of an inch, just the right height, and I just had to cut them to length. It looks like somebody was working on a project and then scrapped it, and it saved me hours of work. So we butter these up very heavily with thickened epoxy, and we'll set these in place. We'll have two rows, one along the outside edge following the curvature of the hull, and one on the inside, and that'll prepare the bed then for the next floor to rest on. So these batteries will clamp the glue and everything in place until tomorrow morning, and then we can set the next subfloor in place. So everything had been pre-fitted in here. Now it's time to lay down a heavy bead of thickened epoxy on those spacers and on the outside edge of this next floor panel. This is a big step towards completing this project, although there's still a long ways to go. You can see off to the right side an L-shape piece of white panel on the wall. That was cut out bad area and a panel placed in there, glued in, and very securely fiberglassed along all the seams. These screws are just holding the panel in place temporarily till everything sets up so I can continue working on the space that is on the left side over near my hand. There's another area of the wall that needs to be filled in. So now the second floor is all fiberglassed into the hull, the outer section of the hull. The wall on the right side where you see the L shape and the left wall, it's all secure. So we can pull the peel ply off and get ready to install the back wall of the battery box. Now this sheet of plywood has already been fiberglassed on both sides. And to hold it in place temporarily, I installed a cleat off to the forward end of the wall and also on the aft end of the wall and clamped it in place at that point and set a battery up against the wall to help hold it securely in place while I put in a tab of fiberglass along the bottom edge on the outside of the wall and the hull and then on the inside edge of the wall to the new floor. And once all that was set up, I could pull the battery that was help holding everything in place, get the plastic release off of there. And now I can pull the peel ply off to the left and right and fill in that little gap. Now for my amateur fiberglassing ways, this is the easiest way for me to make a fillet. Put down some blue tape first as an outline then cram the thickened epoxy into place. And once the epoxy is set up, then, not hardened, but just somewhat set up, then I can pull the tape off and that'll be a nice fillet. So that the fiberglass, when I put on two layers here, it'll just fold around, it won't have any air bubbles behind it.
Oh, the time crunch is on. Today's Friday. Rebecca is coming back on Monday. And I don't know if I can get this job finished. I mean, I look at how little I've gotten done. Actually, it's a lot, but it doesn't look like it. It's been taking me about a day, a full day, to manufacture a piece, cut it, fiberglass it, and install it. And there's been a lot of pieces to go back in here. If I had to pay somebody to do this work, I would be very disappointed in how little has gotten done in such a long time and what the cost would have been. But I've been working from morning until late at night, and this is what I have to show for it. But today I have the panel outside. I laid it up last night. Um, I cut it and then fiberglassed it on both sides. It's outside. The peel ply just has to come off of it, and that's what I'll be installing today the end panel for the battery box. And hopefully today I'll get the panel that's being manufactured to go here. It's white on the outside and uh, just fiberglassed on the inside. It's a, a foam core and that'll certainly be an all day project to install that because I'll have to make a template to make sure it fits exactly right. There's no second chance if I cut it too short, then I have to put fillers and all kinds of things on the end, which I don't want to do. And hopefully we'll get something completed in here before Rebecca gets back so we can get a lot of this junk out of the main saloon and stored back in this compartment. Using some spray-in contact cement to secure it, now is the time to install closed cell foam padding in the storage compartment. This vent hole is on the back panel of the battery box. There will be another vent hole on the front side on the finish panel after that one is installed. Okay, good. So I have all of the structure pretty well set. I have a cleat here so the panel can push up, the new panel can push up against that one. We have this for the new panel to push up. I just put another cleat in down here. And we have most of the bird's nest of wires out of the way. And I'll deal with straightening up the rest of that later. I'll probably just hire somebody locally here to come in and, and uh, set it up most properly. There's just too much work for myself and ship to be doing. So that would be a nice, easy job for an electrician to take care of. Um, let's see, I need to take some measurements here to make the cutout in the template for these wires. I need to cut out from there to there. And then I can bring the template in and see how it fits. Here's a cool tool for driving screws. It's an extension for the screw bit, but it's a lot more than that. It's actually a holder for the screw. That collar slides forward and you put your screw in with it just protruding a little bit. Then as you start the screw into the wood, this collar pulls back and leaves the screw in place. It makes it very nice for getting into these very hard to reach places like down in here. Perfect. Oh, hey, Lily. How you doing, kitty? Come in to help? It took about eight trips in and out of here with the six millimeter, one quarter inch thick plywood template to shave it, sand it, and shape it exactly right to fit. Then I took that template, traced it out onto this finish panel, and cut it. It's a nice tight fit, although it I did have to cut out the floor just a little bit more to accommodate the thickness of the panel, and then we had a very good fit. Here it is, 10 o'clock. I've been at it all day since 8 o'clock this morning. Very dark outside now. But I think I might have it. I pick up Rebecca tomorrow afternoon. But I just finished up tabbing the new panel in place. So I have all the fiberglass down here, a couple layers on the sides, on the bottom. 
back over in this corner so it's pretty well tabbed in it's all glued in with the fillet along the very top edge here and of course it's all faced in with glue along here and everywhere that I can possibly face it in. A couple screws helping to hold things in. We'll leave those clamps in place until probably noontime tomorrow. And actually I can start tomorrow putting things back in this storage space back here and get some of that stuff out of the main saloon. So it isn't completely finished. There's still some touch-ups, but it's good enough for now. So we have the exhaust fan right here with the on off switch. The covers for the batteries are made of MDO plywood, medium density overlay. It's a very high grade plywood. There's no knots or voids in the plies. It's made with exterior glue. It's faced with a paper product that's impregnated with epoxy resin. So you can get a good one side or good both sides. Sign painters use this for exterior signs. Or you can also use it for cabinets because it paints so well. And I went ahead and put another layer of epoxy on both sides of these covers just to ensure that the battery acid won't bother them. And this is just a piece of plywood with fiberglass on one side. The vent hole in the back, the vent with the fan in the front. We're in pretty good shape here. The one thing I need to do is secure them somehow. So if we do get healed way over, they won't come falling out of this cabinet. I'm thinking about having some straps fiberglass to the inside of this finished wall and then I can bolt them onto the back wall. But this is where I could use some help. If you have any good ideas really how to secure these batteries in place, please let me know down in the comments. And the rest of the boat in the main saloon, or our, our living room is what we call it, is pretty well cleared up. People can actually sit on the starboard bunk now. We have room under the table for more storage of things that Rebecca is bringing home. So the boat is livable again, finally, for two people and one cat. So let's go to the airport and find Rebecca. I'll never know how Rebecca was able to handle these four way over heavy bags plus two overstuffed carry-on bags all the way from USA to Africa. But what a lot of treasure she brought back to the boat. Far better than anything I could ever pull out of my trading bin over here in the parking lot. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope this video is worthwhile for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And there is also a link to the tip jar if you don't mind helping out in that direction. And we'll see you next time. Thank you all you tipsters.